Good morning. Uh, good morning to, uh, to, to our uh, audience uh, here uh, at the Zoom webinar, but also uh, on the live uh, YouTube stream where you can also uh, watch uh, this discussion uh, that is uh, part of conference fascinations. I would, uh, uh, I would like to uh, welcome our dear panelists, uh, speakers today, uh, and uh, uh, they are uh, Koyo Yamashita, uh, who is the director of uh, Image Forum from Tokyo, Japan, and uh, uh, Martin Blažiček, uh, who is uh, a, a project manager in uh, Narodni Filmový Archiv, the, the National Film Archive of Czech Republic here in Prague. Uh, unfortunately, our other guests uh, for tomorrow couldn't uh, uh, join us. Uh, of course, that uh, uh, in, in these circumstances, uh, uh, it is uh, changing from day to day uh, what is possible for who and from which part of the world. Uh, but I'm very happy that we can talk with uh, Koyo and with Martin uh, yesterday. Uh, you could see, or if you didn't have the opportunity, uh, you can uh, you can watch it uh, now from the recording. Uh, you could see the introductory presentations uh, of uh, uh, Image Forum and uh, uh, about the project video archive uh, that is managed by Martin uh, in a National Film Archive uh, here in Czech Republic. I will just briefly remind you of uh, of the websites. Uh, so, so first, uh, let us uh, make a brief summary. Uh, uh, Image Forum, it is uh, one of the key organizations uh, focused on experimental films uh, in uh, Asia. Uh, it is based in Tokyo, uh, in Japan, uh, and uh, it, it has its own collection of experimental films. Uh, uh, it has uh, its own uh, theater. It organizes a festival. The festival has just ended two weeks ago. Uh, um, and Image Forum organizes really many uh, great educational activities and uh, uh, also workshops uh, for different uh, target uh, groups and also for film professionals and uh, they also publish uh, books uh, on uh, on cinema. Uh, National Film Archive is the main uh, archive institution uh, here in uh, here in Czech Republic and uh, Martin Blažiček is uh, uh, managing the project that is called uh, uh, Video Archive so let me share you the website. Uh, it's here, it's videoarchive-nfa.cz and it's also in English. So you can see the basic information over there. And Martin and Koyo were talking about uh, their institutions and, uh, and their uh, projects and activities yesterday uh, in the presentation. Uh, presentations, uh, they are already published, the recording of the of this session is uh, is already published uh, online. You can find it uh, through Ihlava Festival website, uh, uh, industry and conference uh, fascinations. So now uh, to our today's uh, program. Yesterday at the first discussion panel, uh, we opened the topic of uh, uh, presentation and distribution of experimental films in the virtual space, in, in the online uh, space. And uh, we, we were talking about it uh, mostly from the curatorial point of view, but we also mentioned uh, several uh, organizational or production uh, details. So we will continue in, in this uh, topic uh, today. I would like to say to our audience, uh, if you are watching us uh, on a YouTube stream, uh, you, you can just watch, you cannot participate. But if you are attendees uh, here in, uh, uh, in the Zoom webinar, you can uh, participate, you can ask a question or say a remark, a comment, uh, just use the function raise hand uh, and then we will uh, allow you to talk and uh, uh, you will be part of the, uh, of, of the discussion. Uh, 
So uh, now I would like to ask Koyo and Martin, uh, the, uh, the, does your organization have uh, an online uh, video library? And if yes, uh, uh, how does it work or what is its main purpose? Uh, Koyo, could you start? Uh, Koyo, you have to uh, turn on your microphone. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, can you hear me? Uh, yes, perfectly. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, so thank you, thank you for uh, inviting me uh, and also Image Forum to this uh, very interesting uh, exchange program of experimental films. Uh, we're, I think it's my third time to uh, participate. Uh, it's always exciting. Uh, thank you very much, Andrea. Uh, uh, so um, I, uh, for our online uh, archive, uh, we we have a lot of, uh, we have films from uh, early si uh, 60s uh, and we also have, uh, you know, uh, we kind of archive uh, the, the films we showed in, in, uh, in our annual festival. A lot of them, the older ones are um, 16 and uh, or eight millimeter which are waiting to be digitized. Uh, it's in Japan, it's very difficult to find uh, funding for such uh, digitization. So I think uh, only the main, you know, the, how to say, like the very selected works are, all, all, are only available digi on, on digital. And we have a kind of a Vimeo platform uh, to, for uh, curators or scholars who would like to watch uh, films and, and, but this is, uh, uh, yeah, this is uh, only for, you know, only for domestic, uh, you know, uh, how do you say, uh, view, view. Uh -huh. view. So, mm -hmm. mm. Sorry, so, so uh, uh, it's available for these working purposes for uh, curators or maybe researchers, yeah. uh, but only from Japan or uh, the researcher or curator can be also from abroad? Um, yes, um, they can access, but uh, yes, yes, they, they can access, but only for, uh, you know, like, uh, yeah, yeah, oh, no, no, sorry, sorry, I'm, I'm kind of mixed up. Oh, yes, uh, people up from outside can access, yes, yes. Yes, but it is a, a, a protected access. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's, it's not uh, public, but it's only for mm -hmm. this. Uh, selected uh, groups of people who can yeah. uh, work with the films i see yeah. i understand because it's uh, you know the, the the resolution and the quality varies a lot because we, some of the digitizations are done in very old days and it's kind of a copy from a uh, older telecine or something so it's very uh, it's not like really it's really really pre preview <laughs> uh, thing so uh, yeah Yes, uh, thank you. And uh, I, I have to say that uh, also yesterday when we were discussing with the other uh, distributors of uh, experimental films, uh, the, the, the main base that most of them uh, have it is the uh, video library where the films are digitized only in the preview quality and, and they are for these working purposes for curators or, or uh, researchers. Um, but the, the, the distributors uh, differ in the amount of uh, films, how many films they were uh, able to uh, make accessible uh, in this way. Uh, Martin, mm -hmm. how, how it is with uh, with the uh, uh, an, an National Film Archive, uh, Narodny Filmový Archiv uh, in Prague. Uh, first, if you can tell uh, in general, please, uh, about the, the Narodny Filmový Archiv, and then in particular, your project video archive. Mm -hmm. So also thank you very much for inviting us to this panel. And I'm very happy to be here uh, with Koyo. Uh, I can share screen if I can for the general part. Um, Let's try. Can you see the screen well? Yes, it works yeah. well. Okay, so um, there's a few layers of access. Um, first, uh, I have to say that NFA is not uh, using just a single platform, but basically for every particular purpose, there is a different platform. And I would even say, although I'm not aware of all the platforms or possibilities which are in NFA still, uh, we are using probably the most of possible 
uh, including YouTube and Vimeo and uh, others. So I'm just going to show you the most uh, frequently used scenarios. So the one which is very much for public and it's not uh, meant to be for uh, for experimental film, it's more for feature film, especially for historical films from the 40s and 50s, is YouTube channel, uh, which is very, very common, very, uh, very simple. Um, it's maintained regularly, there are new works coming, and uh, it's um, a strategy that disseminates films that are recently digitized or restored, and are, these films are available for public without any restriction, uh, without payment, uh, in a decent quality, uh, watermarked, uh, in full length, uh, just as it is. But uh, yeah, but this is not for uh, all the cases. This is just for selected films, uh, which might meet the criteria to be published here. It's uh, the channel called, uh, uh, it is a channel called uh, Česká filmová klasika. And uh, this is also a project which is uh, made in collaboration with other institution, which is basically uh, providing all the online access and uh, media transfers and so and so. Uh, Although we use other less uh, common platforms like um, DA Films, which is the platform we are right now, I believe, uh, in Vetihlava. Uh, so some works, even of experimental filmmakers, such as Jan Sagel, are distributed here. And this is uh, already, uh, I think, pay-per-view, if I remember well, uh, or it's a VOD platform. So these works are already beyond the paywall. Uh, this is sub subscription only, actually. And uh, uh, this is due to the fact that we don't have uh, the, uh, the full rights for the film, exclusive rights. So if we have the copyright for the film, um, we never ask for the, uh, uh, the, the uh, exclusive rights. So that means that platforms like the R films can be, can be still contracted with the director or the, the uh, maker. Yeah, so, sorry, Andrea. If I can just add uh, that uh, as uh, for uh, most of the films, the DAF films is the same with the films of Jan Sagel, uh, that, that you can either uh, have a subscription and so you have the access to the whole library, including these films, or you can buy each film uh, separately, either for just streaming or, or, or to download. So it's also a TVOD option and it's also SVOD option. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this this is more for, uh, let's say, underground film director like Jan Sagel. It's a more suitable platform than the general uh, YouTube distribution. And uh, if I go a little bit beyond the public distribution, uh, there, are se there are several tools, uh, such as the research tool, which uh, is, I'm not sure if it's accessible public or not, but I think it is. And this is basically a database of uh, the film materials which does not include the media itself. So when a researcher or a person would like to know what kind of media is in NFA based on metadata or several keywords or any criteria, you can find it here. And if you look at the film, actually, so you, only, you not only see the, the, the basic metadata, but you also see the rip of the materials. So you can see how many individual materials is attached to this movie, which in the case of Botička means that we have uh, uh, we have a, a print, uh, then we have a, a image and sound print twice, and we have the original negative of the image. And yeah, uh, and each of them has uh, its own metadata attached to it. It's nothing really uh, fancy uh, for the audience, which would go to YouTube or other commercial channels but it serves uh, research purposes uh, quite well. So you can click and open the XML files to see very exactly what's the length of the opening titles of the film in instance. So it's very well described in very, very, very deep details uh, for each individual print. And uh, finally, there is a platform uh, which is kind of an internal YouTube channel. <clears throat> uh, it's on a platform called PeerTube and it's password protected uh, uh, space, which uh, is used by NFA to serve the research prints, uh, the digitized research prints uh, for researchers. So like this movie by Radek Pilas, uh, it's uh, watermarked, it's uh, branded with the time code, but it's something which can be posted to a um, researcher online for, uh, for viewing purpose. Uh, otherwise, there is, a, uh, uh, there is a library at NFA in Prague, which uh, 
can show the films from, from the collection to researchers as well. But this is an example of online access through proprietary uh, peer to platform. Uh, and as for the, the video archive, uh, this is a little bit tricky because we are building it uh, from scratch. At the moment, we have no acquisitions yet, but we already have a large number of films that is waiting uh, to be uh, run through acquisition process. And uh, so we are in a unique situation that we can set the rules pretty much from scratch. So it's something you can't do if you already have the library or have the collection. And it's very difficult to go back and rewrite the rules for, for the part that already exists. So for, for uh, the upcoming library, which will be released in uh, October, uh, we have a plan that actually holds the media and the data in the same system. So whatever is being uh, put into the archive at the same time should be online. Uh, of course, technically, it's the system will work that way. It's possible, but um, it's uh, still depending on uh, the licensing that we reach with the, the copyright holder. Uh, but there would be options how to treat the work online. One of them would be, of course, no media online. But we really hope that most of the copyright holders will agree to some kind of presence of the media online, uh, although in uh, reduced quality or in uh, preview form or in shortened form or in other kind of limited uh, media, yeah. I see. Uh, I, I will just uh, add uh, for a clarification uh, that, uh, that uh, you were talking about, uh, at the beginning you were talking about the whole institution mm -hmm. of uh, National Film yeah. Archive, not only about its collection of uh, um, experimental films, uh, but this particular project of video archive that you were talking about at the end, that is the one uh, that is focused on this part of uh, of, of the collection. Yes. Uh, so I would uh, just uh, just so we, we, that we are uh, uh, in the same uh, uh, le level of uh, information because you already told uh, uh, if the. Uh, films from uh, National Film Archive are also at some other external VOD platforms. So I will ask the same question uh, to Koyo, and then afterwards we will talk about uh, licensing, which is uh, which is a very important uh, perspective uh, in these uh, problematics. Uh, uh, Koyo, are some of your films from your collection being presented uh, at some uh, other uh, VOD uh, platforms, uh, so, so, some uh, external VOD services? Actually, uh, actually, for the experimental uh, films that we have, are not only on VOD platform at all. <laughs> uh, since uh, since this, I think it's uh, we're not uh, we don't have much. Uh, 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 how do I say? Uh, we we this is just you know we have to build it up. Uh, we don't have uh, any kind of a platform who are you know in, in Japan who's taking over this uh, kind of a space field. Uh, so I'm sure some of the filmmakers already have deals with uh, European uh, BOD platforms and do uh, distribution, but uh, for in a you know in a larger uh, you know scale, uh, there is no such uh, you know you know domestic uh, BOD platform here, so or even Asian. So um, I think this is just we have to start, or we have to you know we have to find a way to you know to explore this field. So I, I, I think it's more. <laughs> I, I, I see, so, so it's uh, as, as, as in the whole area of like any activities connected with experimental films, it's probably mm -hmm. waiting for Image Forum to, <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to, yeah, but to, I to think, think that, about it and, and, and to build it. <laughs> yeah, uh, also uh, some of the, you know, the maybe independent uh, filmmakers just use uh, Vimeo or whatever, uh, you know, to, to distribute their own films uh, online, but like there's no like a, like a really, really a uh, platform for this type of uh, films. Yeah. I see. But also and for the, well, it's, it's been like this because screening is also uh, done by basically, you know, af outside of image form, it's very difficult to find a platform for uh, physical screening. Uh, for experimental film as well, there are uh, independent, you know, independent screenings, but like no, no organization, you know, or festivals would, you know, continuously deal with this, you know, kind of films here. Exactly, and uh, 
and and you are doing really a, a, a great job presenting these films in cinema theaters in the context of of, uh, of the festival of the festival that just uh, ended two, two, two weeks ago and congratulations to, to, to it. Uh, so let's follow up with the question of uh, licenses. Uh, we can speak about it uh, on, also in this situation when you don't have your own uh, VOD platform or uh, uh, you, you don't have VOD platform in Japan where you could uh, place uh, the films that you digitize. Uh, although, as you mentioned, it's uh, difficult to fund uh, to, 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 to find funding, uh, finances for uh, digitization of, of the films uh, in, in Japan. Uh, so uh, imagine the situation that, uh, 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 for example, the platform uh, the, uh, the Films would like to place some of the films that you have digitized. Uh, uh, is Image Forum uh, the, the rights holder or who is the rights uh, holder of the films that you have in your uh, uh, collections? And if you yeah. have some, if you have some, I'm sorry, if you have some uh, contracts uh, with, with the right uh, uh, right holders, does it include also on, uh, digit, uh, digital or online distribution? Um, I think we have to work on that because uh, a lot of uh, uh, films that we have is more due to you know face to face. Uh, uh, kind of uh, old, old, <laughs> old school way of uh, distribution. So um, each time, if we have, like for some, uh, for example, if we have uh, uh, from the festival who would like to show uh, online film uh, in online for some films that we have, we always each time we talk to the filmmakers if they want to show online, and you know if you want, yeah, they. Uh, we ask for the conditions and you know that's very old school so we don't have a systematic kind of a uh, especially due to on online uh distribution we don't have like a written uh yeah and uh, and um so and, and if you uh, uh, distribute uh, the film that you have in your collection or you present them, uh, not online, but uh, at some physical event, like uh, at some festival in some other, uh, uh, other countries, mm -hmm. uh, you also have to ask uh, the, the filmmakers or you have uh, uh, some uh, licensed rights, at least for, uh, for the uh, physical, uh, physical way of presentation of, of the films. J just, just to uh -huh. clarify that because it's really different in uh, uh, in each country. Uh, so yeah. just to, uh, that we know how it is uh, in in Japan. I think for the I think for uh, the more the how do you say the classic kind of older films we have uh, more uh, written uh, like a, like we have a basic how do you say uh, contract. Uh, yeah, uh, or, or the basic to, rights to yeah, yeah, yeah. or handling the films. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So we we follow this uh, this kind of a guideline guideline. What do you call it? like a contrast contract? Uh, but for uh, you know because we we cannot we handle all the you know we we don't really have rights for the films. We actually kind of a, we work as a kind of an agent or I don't I don't know like manager because there's no other you know, uh, organization who would do such things. So, you know, um, for the more the young films for the more from the younger generation, uh, sometimes they could just work with them, work by themselves. But sometimes uh, distributors or festivals would come to us to, you know, for showing some, some films. And then we talk with the filmmaker, you know, if they want to, you know, do whatever they want. Or, whatever the festival wants or yeah I so see. so yeah yeah i see i see mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay okay uh, uh very very interesting and also uh, a lot of work for you <laughs> yes <laughs> and any time uh any other organization but you uh wants to present the films you have to negotiate with the authors so it, mm -hmm. it's really a lot of, a lot of work uh, yeah job. Uh, Martin, uh, can, can you say how it is uh, with the films uh, that are in National Film Archive, but now we, we mean especially the experimental films? Mm -hmm. I'm going to show something I may, may forgot uh, before. What we actually do with uh, the video archive is um, we're using the database called Atom. Uh, 
uh, A2M. Uh, it's a front end for database uh, managing system or for media managing system that is called Archive Archivematica. And it's um, an open source uh, worldwide use, uh, kind of a known, well known uh, system. And um, uh, it brings me to the point that we actually use uh, this platform as archiving platform, not as distribution platform. And this is also the main aim of the video archive. It's an archive, it's not a distribution platform. Uh, so we always have to keep reminding that because uh, we are not so selective. And while we uh, do acquisitions, we accept practically everything, of course, based on uh, various uh, criteria uh, and uh, preferences. But uh, at the end, uh, we accept uh, works which are not meant to be distributed. So uh, from this point of view, we always sign the contract with a maker or with license holder for the archiving itself, uh, meaning that the work is accessible only to um, uh, researchers or some, someone who is physically coming to the building or who is uh, being uh, fed through the uh, peer tube portal uh, with uh, single time access to, to media. Uh, so this is the first layer of the contract. And of course, we have the second layer, which uh, if the license holder agrees, the media becomes accessible for public in broader sense. It's not only the one who comes as a research fellow to the archive, but it's basically anyone who comes to the Ponrepo Cinema, the Cinema of uh, National Film Archive in Prague. And then we have the right to show the work within the infrastructure of NFA uh, for everyone, uh, which is kind of nice. Then the work can be put into exhibitions, it can be uh, projected in cinemas, uh, uh, but we have, you have to be the organizer. It's nothing you could actually rent for payment. Uh, it has to go through NFA as, as a main curate curatorial. And um, the third layer is basically the distribution layer. So uh, if the license holder agrees, then you're becoming the distributor of the works, although we are not meant to be uh, getting a profit from the works. We are not actually a very good distributor for filmmakers because uh, we have very little prices for rental and the filmmakers also getting very little payments. It's more like symbolical payment. So it's not the aim to create a profit from uh, from the acquisition we have. It's more the payment for um, maintenance purpose rather than uh, the, the actual profit. So compared to distributions like Livecone or uh, or Cinedoc and others, we are actually quite cheap. And and uh, this is mainly because we feel to be more archiving institution rather than the institution of um, of distribution. And yeah, so this is how the films of Lumil Hladík and uh, Jan Jedlička that are presented in um, Jihlava, this is how they came there actually. So we have the license layer, which allows us to program the films and to project them outside of the building and show them publicly for, uh, for, for payment. Yeah. Okay, uh, uh, perfect. Uh, th thank you for uh, describing this and uh, to, to make the uh, information again uh, complete. Yes, Koyo, I wanted to uh, give the word uh, to you because I want to ask you also about the financial model, but maybe you wanted to add something as well. So Koyo, please. Yeah, so uh, it's a bit, uh, I think I have to add something because it's the, 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 the contract is a bit, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's not like really systematic, but you know, if we find some filmmakers who had like a, uh, how to say it, a certain number of films that we can, we think we have commercial potential, like distribution potential, we go to the, uh, to the filmmakers and uh, do commercial distribution contracts as well. So not, uh, we have a different kind of a nonprofit contract or the commercial contract. Uh, so yeah, so some of the filmmakers we, we have uh, you know, the online, online rights and, or video, uh, DVD publishing rights. Yeah. So, but you know, not all the film, we don't do it with all the filmmakers. I, I, I understand. And, uh, uh -huh, Martin. Yeah, maybe I, I would add that, uh, we are actually facing quite a serious problem because the video archive has a very big ambition to accumulate a lot of works during a relatively short time. So we are talking about 100 acquisitions per year. And uh, due to this, we will have to optimize the contracts. So what we are working on is actually kind of a puzzle contract, which would um, include all the possible options that might be interesting for the license holder or that might be applicable for quite a variety of work, including installations, multi-screen works, uh, 
single channel works, films, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And yeah, so so it's the individual negotiation negotiation starts to be less and less possible with such a large amount of works that will be coming into into the collection. So it's maybe a question to Koyo, if I may, what's what's the amount of works you are thinking about to uh, uh, to get into collection during a year or uh, some period of time. Mm -hmm. Koyo, oh, thank you, Martin. Um, so we we. You know, we don't, we don't, we're, so it's a bit, uh, how to say, uh, it's, uh, it's to make, <laughs> it's going to be a bit, very long if we, if I start explaining about this, uh, our structure, but uh, uh, what should I, well, I, I should say, we, we, we're not on the archive. Uh, we are basically, uh, we started as a exhibition exhibitor. So when, when we exhibit uh, new works from the filmmakers, uh, we, we screen them and, you know, if some filmmakers just want to leave their films and prints and they, you know, they ask for, you know, if you, if there's a chance uh, to <laughs> distribute to other festivals or institutions. So we don't have a kind of a certain uh, budget for acquisitions or um, uh, like there's no kind of a really uh, like a linear scheme to on the, on the distribution. So it's kind of a, you know, each time something pops up, <laughs> we just, you know, deal with it. So, it, uh, so uh, that and this kind of uh, work kind of uh, accumulated uh, uh, in this fifty years. So it's it's a bit chaotic, but uh, uh, we we have we are now thinking to you know make it more like systematic. So we build up. Uh, we try to do kind of a semi commercial distribution contract with certain filmmakers. So we started uh, like with 40 filmmakers, we started contacting and create a new uh, contact uh, contract to, you know, to, you know, also including video or uh, web distribution. Yeah, so we, we're going back <laughs> to the older films these days. Uh huh. Yes, and, and this is something I wanted to ask Martin as well, uh, because uh, originally I thought uh, that the films that will be in the video archive, uh, that they are, or at least partly, uh, they are already uh, part of the National Film Archive uh, collections. Uh, but as you said it, uh, it, uh, it, it seemed to me that all the films uh, will be new uh, uh, ca coming from outside to uh, to NFA so how is it mm. well it's it's a tricky uh, question because um, <laughs> we have a uh, we have a lot of films already waiting uh, for acquisitions but the acquisition it's kind of a serious process so once we say like it's an acquisition it actually means to clearing the license and it means to adjusting the work in a very specific manner and um, it's not that simple. So this is why we are working on uh, video archive that would accelerate the whole process. Otherwise, you can spend uh, six months on acquisition of a single piece. It's also possible, but uh, we would like to do like one a day or, you know, it's a very, very fast tempo. And uh, so the works we already have are, um, uh, I'm not sure about the right English word, but it's uh, incoming folder of the works, which we have physically, but uh, we don't have them in a catalog and basically we don't show them publicly. Nobody knows we have them, but we, we know we want to work and and uh, we already have the data or we have maybe the prints, uh, but it's still uh, under pending uh, uh, agreement with the license holder and with the filmmaker. So in this point, we might already have the work, but we still need to contact the filmmaker, ask him for uh, uh, more original media sometimes the, the, uh, for the additional media like negatives or uh, other we create a new uh, digitized version as video archives will be exclusively digital archive so if it's not digital born uh, we digitize a large scale of materials like uh, betamax or uh, dvd rips or um, laser disc also and uh, older media from 60s and 70s and 80s or VHS tapes. So we always ask for these media and then we reach finally the point we have the media we really want to have, not just the one which is uh, the one we have in the folder. And then we have the copyright agreement and then it's the acquisition. But uh, it's it's a long and complicated process. And um, uh, so it means that uh, works in collection will be historical. We are focusing on 70s to 2010s mainly. Uh, also, there are new works coming, obviously, but the major part of the acquisition is um, is like this 40 years of 
with your heart. Yes, and, and, I, and I have to add that uh, uh, this activity of uh, National Film Archive uh, and this project of video archive uh, that uh, Martin is uh, preparing uh, uh, with also with uh, other uh, colleagues uh, is uh, quite a pioneering uh, activity uh, in the field of experimental film uh, in Czech Republic. Because until now uh, in, uh, uh, in our country, we did not have any uh, uh, one place where uh, you could uh, find uh, more of uh, the films uh, at uh, advance and uh, somebody to negotiate about uh, uh, renting the films or uh, just to watch the films, may maybe only for uh, working purposes, uh, curators and researchers. Uh, uh, so, uh, so always these films uh, had to be like hand picked from very different uh, sources. Uh, so it's really great that this uh, video archive is uh, now starting. Uh, and uh, and with, uh, with Image Forum in Japan, uh, it is uh, a little bit like revised uh, situation that you are uh, quite an uh, old institution, uh, which is really fantastic that uh, Japanese filmmakers and curators uh, have you as the organization who, uh, who put together the information and also the film. And moreover, as I said at the beginning, you organize uh, many other accompanying activities connected to experimental cinema, which is really fantastic for the, for the discourse and also for, for the authors. and. Um, and also for for the young generation of audience, uh, 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 perfect. But uh, as you Koyo described it, it was it was really beautiful how to, you described it. Uh, that uh, originally you didn't start uh, start as a uh, organization uh, uh, with a collection. You you started to exhibit the film, and then the film the films just stayed and now you have a fantastic collection <laughs> which is really great but you have to go back and uh, yeah ma make these uh, licenses uh, make the, the rights cleared uh, and, and licenses uh, written down uh, of no. course so yes you want to add something and i would also like you koyo if you could please add uh, just one mo one small information um uh, about the uh, about the finances or your uh, economic uh, uh, policy that uh, if uh, you have a film in your collection and you present the film uh, publicly and you have some income uh, is it uh, on 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 the base of a revenue share between you and the filmmaker or what is the uh, the e economic model yeah so um, yeah, so add, to add something, we have uh, also a lot, lot of videos, and uh, you know, the, it's we usually what happens with the uh, works. Uh, they show, they do showcases, or in, they show do programs in the festival, and filmmakers just, you know, just leave their works here, and <laughs> they they just sometimes they don't come back. <laughs> and we have uh, a lot of original, uh, you know, a lot of eight millimeters original. Uh, so we have uh, uh, a lot of uh, eight millimeter works, which has even we don't find contact. So it's a bit of a problem there. there uh, so we, we have another issue that we have to deal with. Uh, so uh, yeah, we try to start trying to you know track down all, all the information back again the, these times and uh, about the revenue share yes we do a uh, revenue share but basically we it's always we, we have we have a price uh, kind of a rental list and then uh, we have a certain for the uh, for the how to say like a classic experimental films and when we uh, when we rent a film we share 50 50 with the filmmakers uh, uh, sometimes we we always negotiate. We if, we if the museums come to us and they want to purchase with certain amount of acquisition, uh, um, we always talk with uh, filmmakers. So what what will be the, the best best deal with uh, yeah with the films each films, but basically it's fifty fifty revenue share. 
Yes, the, this uh, this already opens uh, so, so many uh, other questions because I would like to also ask you uh, what is the difference when you uh, rent the films for uh, cinema presentation or for gallery presentation. But uh, unfortunately, we, uh, uh, our time uh, is up, so we, uh, we, we cannot continue in, in this conversation. But anyhow, these questions were uh, uh, already discussed uh, uh, quite deeply in the context of conference fascinations in the past years, and we will definitely come back to them in the following years, because uh, uh, b besides the fact that uh, these are important practical questions uh, that uh, uh, people who are dealing with uh, uh, moving image and experimental films are uh, still uh, have to um, deal with uh, quite on daily basis and they are really evolving. Uh, uh, it, it, it is also uh, uh, important that we uh, stay updated about uh, how we are in different parts of the world uh, co concerning uh, this, uh, this part uh, of, of the cinema, which does not have uh, such a strong infrastructure uh, as uh, fiction films or even uh, documentary or uh, uh, animated films. Uh, so, uh, Thank you very much, uh, Koyo and Martin, uh, for, for joining us. Uh, it was so uh, interesting to, to hear uh, again about Image Forum. Uh, we heard about uh, your uh, really fantastic organization uh, already in the past, but uh, it's great to update on, uh, on some of the questions. And uh, again, congratulations to the festival. Uh, th that you had and in physical form. Wow, uh, fantastic. Uh, and uh, just uh, take care and continue in your uh, great work and all of the activities uh, that you do. Martin, thank you very much uh, that we could have a National Film Archive here and uh, your, uh, your project video archive uh, introduced. And I will be really happy if we uh, keep uh, follow up uh, on this information and uh, we uh, follow the development uh, of the project. So uh, I will be happy if uh, you or uh, one of your colleagues uh, join us next year uh, again to tell uh, what, what was the progress uh, in, the, in the meantime and uh, how it looks with, with the films because it's really, as I said, a pioneering activity uh, here in Czech Republic. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, our dear speakers. Uh, thank you, uh, the attendees here uh, at the Zoom webinar. And also, uh, I'm sending warm greetings to uh, all the audience uh, that are uh, watching the YouTube uh, stream. So uh, take care, uh, stay safe, and uh, have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.